Once that's set, we're gonna duplicate those lines over and over and over again, about 127 times. No, 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 you do not want to do that, no. This technique was cool in 2010, it is not cool today. For this task, for isometric drawing, and doing this kind of art, it is so much easier to do it now, and I'm gonna be walking you through how I do it in Affinity Designer as opposed to Adobe Illustrator, which you see here. So I'm gonna be covering a couple things in this video. I've chunked it up into four sections. The first section is, how do I do it? What are the steps? What are the tools? The second section is probably just as important. That is, how do I make it look good? In the third section, I take the technique and I show you how to make more advanced things with it, like pixel textures, how to skew your shapes when you're drawing, stuff like that. And lastly, if you want to do a deep dive into Affinity Designer, whether it's the desktop or the iPad, I have some discount codes to my courses down below. So let's start by going over Affinity's isometric features. I'm going to start by going to the view dropdown and I'm going to go to here to show grid. It's going to give me a very basic grid. That's cool. Before I go to anywhere else, I'm going to take this grid and I'm just going to draw a couple squares on it and I'm going to make these squares darker because we're gonna be using these to build an isometric cube here in a minute. Then I'm gonna go back to view and we're gonna bring up all of our grid options. So I'm gonna go down to here to grid and axis manager. Gonna click that open and you're going to see a box like this. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to the advanced tab. Within the advanced tab, we have this dropdown called mode and from here, I can change it to isometric and you're gonna see we just turn this into an isometric grid. Now, one of the things I don't care for is how big the grid is. I want it smaller. So right now it's set to 64. I'm gonna just set it to 24 for now because that'll do what I need it to do and that looks pretty good. One last thing that I'm gonna do, and this is the hidden little feature that is fairly new to Affinity Designer with a 1.7 update that came out a couple weeks ago, depending on when you're watching this video. And that is this feature right here, Create Plane Set. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna open up this isometric dialog, which I'm gonna keep open for the remainder of this little tutorial here. This is where the magic is. So what I can take is I can take one of my boxes that I've drawn and right here I have my current plane. And by changing my current plane, you can see my grid changes. But what's really cool is there's an option right here called fit to plane. If I go ahead and click that with my box selected, it snaps automatically to that plane. If I change to another plane, select another box and go to fit to plane again, it fits to the other plane. And you guessed it, for the top, we're gonna do the top. I'm gonna grab that image. I'm gonna click fit to plane. And there we go. Now we have a nice box that fits together perfectly. Since all these shapes are the same color, it's a little hard to tell the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lighten these up a little bit. I'll lighten up the top even more. And when I toggle off my grid, what happens? We have a perfect cube. So once you have your grid turned on, that's all you have to do is open this isometric panel, toggle between your planes, and change things up. I'm gonna bring another object into play just to show you how this works. This is a simple door that I threw together in two and a half seconds. Now, if I change my plane to front and I take this door, what happens if I have multiple objects together and I say fit to plane? It fits that entire door to the plane. You can draw the side of cars, you can draw the side of buildings, you can draw the side of pretty much anything, fit it to the plane, and it will automatically snap exactly where you need it to be for your isometric illustration. This is a huge time saver. Before I was using the pen tool to actually draw to the grid that I laid out. Now it does it automatically for me. I'm gonna to toggle my grid back on for a second just to show you something really quick. Cause there's other things in this isometric dialogue that are important to know. You can flip on a horizontal plane, flip on a vertical plane, rotate, all that stuff makes sense. But you might be thinking, well, I still have to draw it and then fit it to the plane. But there's actually a faster way to go about doing that. And that is this icon right here, edit in plane. Once that's activated, now when I come in here and I go to draw anything, it's just going to draw whatever I have inside that plane. Uh, it's really, really handy. And this works for literally any shape. So if I want a circle, I have a circle and an oval. So if I want a perfect circle, I hold down the shift key while I am drawing and now I have a perfect circle. Drawing tires, drawing windows, anything circular used to be a real pain in the butt when you were drawing it isometrically. Not anymore. Can I get a little music? We're going to section two. How do we make this look good? If you're new to isometric art, I wanna share a couple rules of the road. First, we must all bow down and worship the sun. Yes, the one in the sky. Actually, you can use any light source. In our case, 
the sun is right about here. And so whenever we draw anything, we have to think about how the light is hitting it. The most light is hitting the top, so the top of this is lighter than the rest. The second plane is going to get slightly less light, and the third plane is gonna be cast in shadow. If you follow these rules, you're pretty much gonna be fine. I'm gonna zoom into my box here because the next part of this is thinking about how shapes cut into each other. If we want a hole inside of this box, uh, let's just cut that out. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna draw my first shape, and obviously I don't want it to be orange, so I get to grab my eyedropper tool and grab my shadow layer. Now, thinking about where our sun is coming from, if this is indented on the top of my roof or the top of my cube, the shadow is gonna be right there. Now, if I grab this and duplicate it and flip over to my side thing, fit that to that plane instead, and then move it on up here like that. How much light is this gonna get? It's gonna get the same amount of light as this side one. So I'm gonna grab that, grab my eyedropper tool, grab that color. Now we can fiddle around with this a little bit and I'm gonna toggle off my grid because it's actually getting in my way at the moment. And we have some problems here because our edges are overlapping. So in Affinity Designer, whenever we draw a shape, before we can break it apart and just drag any point anywhere, we need to right click on it, convert it to curves, and then I can use my white arrow, also known as my node tool, and grab any point and move it around. Now this actually probably would have been a good idea to keep my grid on, but for the sake of this demonstration, we don't need it. So I'm going to follow the same line as the rest of my roof or my cube. I'm gonna come here, gonna go down to convert to curves, grab that point again, and drag it on up. So think of this as like an, an indent in the top of a roof or in top on the top of a cube. So when we zoom out, we can tell our light source is affecting all of the elements that we're drawing. And most of the things that we're going to draw are just going to be taking these shapes and putting a whole bunch of shapes together. But for now, I wanna get to section three. Musical interlude, please. I wanna start making more detailed objects. So let's get rid of all this stuff. Boom. First things first, I'm gonna to toggle my grid back on. I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to grid and axis manager again. For now, we're gonna draw some Minecraft boxes and this is going to be like pixel artwork. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna go back to my standard grid. We're going to go to the isometric grid later, but for now, we're just gonna stick with our standard grid and I'm gonna close that. Next thing I'm gonna do is up along the top, I have this little magnet. Next to the magnet, there's a little drop down menu and this is snapping. I can enable snapping and what that does is any shape I draw is going to snap to something. I want it to snap to my grid. Now we could snap to guides and all sorts of other things as well. You could snap to other objects if you want objects to butt up against themselves. I want everything to snap to the grid to make it easier for me to draw on this grid. So when I grab my shape tool, you can see it kind of aligning to the grid. And as I draw it out, it becomes very easy to align this thing to my grid. So as I draw it out, I can draw a nice big block. I want this block to look like dirt so I can grab any kind of dirt color that I want, probably something a little bit more brown like that. And then I might come in here and draw more pixels and I might grab a color of brown that is just a little bit different than the other browns. And then I'll just randomly come in here and draw some pixels. And there we go, that looks random enough for me. So my next step is to think about what a Minecraft block of dirt looks like. And oftentimes it has some grass on top. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab another shape, and I'm gonna draw just my line across the top and I'm gonna change that to green. And the grass isn't perfect, so I'm gonna come in here with my box shape and I'm going to draw some extra like little boxes here to show that the grass is kind of creeping over this box to give it a 3D feel that it might not otherwise have. Something like this. Now I wanna think about the sun again. If this grass is wrapping around the side of the box, the box is gonna have some shadow to it. So I'm going to come in here and draw some more boxes, but this time I'm gonna use that slightly darker shade of brown underneath it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some shadows to my box. Now, none of this needs to be exact. It just has to look good enough. So that's one side. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm gonna move some stuff around so it's easier to see. And now I need a top. So I'm gonna take my big box. I'm gonna bring it over here. And I didn't duplicate the whole thing this time. I just grabbed the big box and I'm gonna take my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna grab this shade of green. Then I'm gonna do what I did with the box and I'm gonna come in here with a slightly darker shade of green and uh, just add some detail. Add some pixel detail to give this thing a little bit of personality 
Uh, not a ton, just add some little elements here and there, some little pixels. There we go. That's simple enough. So now we're gonna do what we did before. But first, I'm gonna highlight these and I'm gonna make sure that they are an entire group because that's gonna make this easier for me to work with. I'm gonna right click on here, go to group, right click on here and go to group. And now I'm gonna shift over to my isometric grid. Go to view, grid and access manager. We're already in the advanced tab, so I'm gonna go on my mode and go to isometric. If you turned it off, you can click on your create plane set to see it again. I have mine over here on the right hand side in the sidebar, so everything looks good there. Now I can grab each one. I have the top selected, so I'm going to select top in my plane and I'm gonna say fit the plane. I'm gonna grab one side, click on side, fit the plane, grab the other side, and fit that to plane as well. And now it's just a matter of taking these elements and positioning them in a way where I can use them as a box. And there we go, we have our basic Minecraft box all set up for us. Now, right now, uh, we have the same problem that we had before, which is there isn't a lot of contrast between the sizes. So I'm gonna make sure that edit in plane is on in my isometric panel. I'm gonna go to my shapes and I'm going to draw a shape over one side of my box, just like that. And I'm gonna make this shape pure black. And then I can change the opacity underneath it in my color palette to something like that, about 25%. Then I can go along the top, so I'm gonna to go to my top plane and I'm going to draw a yet another shape. So let's go ahead and draw this along the top. This time, instead of being in shadow, I'm gonna use white and it's already set to 25%, so that's okay. I actually think it diminishes it a little bit, so that's okay, I can fix that. I'll just get rid of that and I'll come into my group and if I double click into my group, I can just come in here and manually change that shade of green. Maybe push it towards the yellow a little bit. If I need to, I can go in here and I could grab my boxes and just recolor those. And if I select them all at once, it's easy to recolor them all at once. I just slide those closer to the green I have here. Voila, now I can turn off this grid and we have a simple Minecraft box. Now, before we go on to some of the other shapes, there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about here and that is the idea of using symbols. So I'm gonna go down to view and then to studio and then I'm going to find symbols and I'm gonna turn that on and it's gonna give me this nice dialogue box here. And if I highlight this and I group it, what I can do from here is I can create a symbol. If you are creating any kind of game assets or anything like this, this symbol library can be hugely useful because I can create each and every one of these to my grid. I can create dozens of different boxes or I can create different variations of symbols and put them all together. So I have a separate file already set up with a couple different options in here. And if I toggle on my grid, I can come up to my symbol library and I can take my squares. Now I have a file already set up with a couple icons in it. And so I can take these and I can actually come in here and set up my squares. I can duplicate them. They all align perfectly to my grid so I can grab them and I can move them around. Maybe I want my one with green to be on top. So I'll, I'll put that here, put that there. Maybe I have some other blocks that I'm using as well. I can come in, I can align all of those to the grid and it becomes very easy to start to create artwork. Whoops, I meant to duplicate that. You know, just by taking these symbols and using them over and over and over again. But this is a basic tutorial. I just wanted to share how easy and cool and fun it is to draw with isometric shapes here in Affinity Designer. I've drawn a lot of isometric things over the years and it's so much easier now than it was just a couple years ago. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give me a subscribe or a like, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.